The only thing that annoys me more than a film starring Jai Courtney is when that film wastes time, talent and a decent premise. Anon manages to do at least three of these. But where did it all go wrong? I mean, writer-director Andrew Nichol wrote The Truman Show, directed freaking Gattaca, and was responsible for writing and directing Lord of War, arguably the last great Nicolas Cage performance. There are over 550 million firearms in worldwide circulation. That's one firearm for every 12 people on the planet. The only question is, how do we arm the other 11? And next up, he's making a movie based on the Monopoly board game. Eh, yeah, screw that guy. Aside from sellout directors, this film stars Clive Owen. You know, Clive Owen. He was in Children of Men and Shoot 'em Up, a film that makes John Wick look restrained and thoughtful. Hell, at one point, he was in the running to be James Bond. Although, to my mind, he always looks slightly crumpled, like a picture pulled out of someone's pocket. Which means he was perfectly cast as Sal Freeland, a detective with the shockingly original backstory of a dead child, ex-wife who's moved on when he hasn't, and a drinking problem. All of which I'm beginning to think are requirements to have a job as a police officer in a movie. Anyway, Sal is a cop in um, a city where all colours except grey and black, as well as the ability to hold a decent conversation, have been declared abominations before man and God and systematically destroyed. Now, in, I think it's the future, humanity now has, I don't know, contact lenses, their eyes swapped out at birth, genetically engineered optic nerves, whereupon everything you see is recorded and stored somewhere, as well as giving you the pretty cool ability to look at a person or thing and know everything about that thing, about whatever you've looked at. But the film doesn't explain anything about this technology, even though it's the cornerstone of the whole damn thing. Essentially, crime has been pretty much eliminated because everything that everyone sees is freely available to the cops. So if you do break the law and have a functioning pair of eyes, then your own freaking eyes will call the police on you. Basically, it's an Orwellian nightmare where there's no privacy or anonymity anymore and everyone just seems okay with it. Well, almost everyone. Amanda Seyfried, credited simply as the girl on IMDb, is a hacker who can, for a fee, fix your memories so that as something you did that you would rather people didn't know you did will be forever removed and a false memory implanted in its place. Also, she doesn't show up on a single database or file, and people's recordings of her seem to erase themselves after a few hours. She's also seemingly the lead suspect in a series of unsolved murders, which is pretty much an unknown thing in this society. So here we have a really good setup for a sophisticated, biting, terrifying satire. Freedom versus privacy. How much do we have to give in order to be safe? If even our memories aren't safe, then how can we trust who we are? How did this society come about? Whose idea was it? Are there people who don't partake in the eyes and as such have retreated from the cities like surrogates? Is this scheme worldwide or just in this city? There are so many interesting ideas, debates to have, and this film has no interest in exploring any of them or even engaging in basic world building when it can convince some pretty young thing to take her clothes off again. Oh, and if you're expecting some sort of tense undercover thriller, then boy are you in for a shock. This is Tinker Tailor's Soldier Orwell, except nowhere near as good. None of the characters get developed in any way, shape or form. I mean, I get making the girl a cipher, and Amanda Seyfried kills it in the role, but we learn nothing about anyone else, with the film instead choosing to focus on uh, Cop, who's slightly more interesting than Magnolia Wallpaper, but not by much. There's just not enough meat on the bones to sustain a 100 minute runtime, and all I could think of whilst watching it is that if Charlie Brooker and his Black Mirror team had been able to get their grubby mitts on this screenplay, then this actually quite interesting idea and incredible level of talent could have been developed into something truly memorable and terrifying, because I genuinely know people who would love this level of technology at the eyeballs and don't care about privacy. It also feels too long, there's at least two opportunities when the film could end, but doesn't and instead goes absolutely mad in its last 10 minutes because has no idea how to end properly. And the really, really, really frustrating thing is, is that there is genuinely the idea for such a cool Black Mirror episode here, but it's just mishandled. Owen and Seyfried do what they can, but this is just a dull grey film where dull grey people sit around and spout dialogue at each other, squandering this film's premise. And as the conclusion eventually arrives, it all just descends into predictability. Just skip it, and for the third time this review, watch Black Mirror instead. So just skip it. 
But what do you guys think? And what's your favourite Orwellian nightmare future film? Aside from 1984 in Brazil, comment below and let me know. I'm Daniel, it's been a donkey. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe.